that is horrible. Get him out of here. Get out of here, Daddy. Get out of here. Daddy. Get out of here. Y'all can feel a little bit better than that. Happy Sabbath. Happy All right, let's just have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for how amazing you are. Where would we be without you? We're so thankful we'll never have to know the answer to that question. Thank you for bringing us here for an experience with you. There are things that we need. Some of us, our career, our lives are going in the wrong direction. And we need you to help get us on the right track. Show us who you are today. Give us the knowledge we need. And convict our hearts to follow what you tell us. We love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Um, excited to be here with you all this morning. Um, I have been traveling like a madman. Um, and just got here about an hour ago, two hours ago. Um, but God told me I needed to come um, because I see especially when it comes to, you know, Adventist, you know, young professionals, Adventist youth, um, I see uh, a generation living well beneath your potential. Because uh, growing up, I don't know about you, um, but many of you who may have been Adventist when you were young, um, I thought that we weren't Adventists, I thought we were can't Adventists, okay? <laughs> can't do this, can't do that. Can't do that, nope, can't do that, nope, can't touch the water, nope, it's sad, it's too hot, come on, who am I talking to? <laughs> you know, so you, you grow up sometimes with this feeling that your faith is actually a restriction, and then you begin to feel better about yourself by the things you can't do, and then sometimes we judge others because, well, I don't do that enough, you know, and that gives you more access to his grace, you know what I mean? but not realizing that our faith is not there to be a restriction, it's there to actually open the door to what God has called us to do. Um, as a young kid, I, I wanted to always be in the movie business, and um, you know, that was not a popular dream, amen? I didn't want to be a doctor, I didn't want to be a lawyer, all right? You know, in Adventist faith, man, if you don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer, they, they think you're the black sheep, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or a pastor, right? Um, you know, and I have all of those in my family, and I'm sure there's plenty of, of, of those here, which is fantastic. Um, but I knew that at an early age, God was calling me to do something a little bit different. And so when I would tell people, you know, hey, I want to I wanna go in the movie business, they were like, well, you can't do that. That's Sodom and Gomorrah. You, you can't do that. That's, that's the devil's playground. You'll never be able to keep the Sabbath in, in Hollywood. I said, wait a minute. You, I, I go to church. The last time I checked, the word of God says that faith works, right? We walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is the only thing that makes us acceptable to God. That's the word of God. So all of a sudden, faith stops working at the gates of Hollywood? Oh, but see, what was happening is in all of the cans, there were seeds of fear. The Bible says the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So I would challenge people. i say, wait a minute. You have to tell me the truth. What works, faith or fear? Because we can't have it both ways. You tell me to live by faith, but all of a sudden I get in Hollywood and you want me to be afraid. No, actually, if you would teach me how to use my faith in the most difficult circumstances, that would actually help me prepare me to be successful in the world, not to fear what is out there. So, you know, as a young kid, you start uh, coming back at your, your elders. They say, boy, don't you get smart with me. You know, but I wasn't being smart, but I was being honest. I'm like, yo, I believe the word of God. I believe what I learned in Sabbath school. I believe what I learned in church. But I don't understand why all of a sudden I have a dream in my heart. And I can't apply my faith to my dream and see what God does. So, you know, I said, well, maybe you guys are right. Maybe I need to pursue my, my other fallback plan. Maybe, well, it was, wasn't a fallback plan. Initially, it was kind of like, uh, between football and entertainment. So I said, well, maybe I should, you know, become a football player, right? So uh, freshman year in high school, I tried out for the, the football team. And that, 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 that wasn't a good thing. <laughs> um, they had the uh, junior varsity scrimmage against the varsity. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, they thought that it was smart to have the older, bigger players uh, play against the younger, inexperienced players. And so uh, I was going out for the position of running back and 
they would design the play, and they say, huh, huh, hike, and I run through the hole. And uh, playing defense was James McKinney, all-star, uh, on the varsity team. And I run through the hole, and James, you know, just has this really not pleasant look on his face. And I'm like, this ain't gonna end too well. And so I run through the hole, and bam, James hits me. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm laid out, uh, looking up at the middle of the day, and there are stars in the sky while the sun is shining. Amen and hallelujah. So I say, okay, Lord, I got it. You must not want me to play football um, because my back was hurt. I, I couldn't, it's, that was the only, first and only time I was ever on a football field as a player. And I said, okay, God, I'll go to Hollywood. I'll go to Hollywood, no problem, you know? And so as I started pursuing the dream of Hollywood, um, I'm from San Francisco Bay Area. Anybody from California? Woo! Woo. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'll represent with you, it's all good. You know? um, and so going from the Bay Area, I knew I had to be in LA because that's where Hollywood was. And one of my main motivators to be in the business was movies like Rocky, Back to the Future, Color Purple. Seeing films like this really just inspired me and so I wanted to do movies so I could help make change in the world. And so I knew I had to be in LA. So I applied to a couple different schools um, Oakwood wasn't one of them, I'm sorry. <laughs> they were like, at least go to college days. I said, fine, I'm going to college days, and uh, that was it. They were like, can't you just do a year? I'm like, no, that's not what God's calling me to do, you know. My younger brother, David, ended up going all four, so he, took, he did it for all of us, because I have an older brother, too. And, uh, man, they just, they just kept shaking their head. They just said, Lord, bless him, please. He don't even want to go to Oakwood. He going to Hollywood. That's the wrong wood. Come on, Lord, bless him. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. And so I ended up going to USC, University of Southern California, and um, I knew that it wasn't enough to just get an education. I knew that in order to know if I really was called to be in the business, I needed to get experience in the business. And so I started trying to get an internship my freshman year while going to college. And it just so happened that in uh, high school, um, I had an after-school job, which helped me pay for my car insurance. And the executive director of that organization, of that nonprofit, he was uh, college roommates with this screenwriter. Uh, the screenwriter wrote uh, House Party 4, I think it was, Set It Off, and Booty Call. Um, <laughs> hey, he wrote it. He wrote it. <laughs> okay. Um, and they, at the time, they were, they were pretty big movies. Um, and so I went to meet with him. And he is the one that said, you know what, you should get an internship over at this company called Handprint. Uh, Handprint Entertainment at the time was the management company for Will Smith, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, well at the time she was Jada Pinkett, um, Maya Campbell, Vivica Fox, Babyface, they had pretty much all the hot talent at the time. Um, and so I go in, I put my resume in, and they call me in for an interview. And um, they were just kind of getting started, you know, so they didn't have any interns. So I sit down in the internship interview, and you know, y'all, I, I made like a cardinal sin, right? When I send in my resume, on the resume, I put my picture. Okay. So I walk into the internship interview, and uh, the HR, the general manager, when I'm in there, she shows me my resume, and my picture is crossed off. She said, don't do this. She said, you know, your looks ain't gonna get you a job. You know, if anything, it might keep you from it because you don't know if someone's gonna be prejudiced against you. You know, I said, oh, okay. And I, mind you, I'm like 18, 19 years old. I'm just, I mean, this made me really nervous, you know, but she was nice enough to use it as a learning experience and not something to prevent me from opportunity. So we're in the internship interview, things are going great. You know, she's asking me why I wanna make movies, and I said, hey, I wanna make change. And she's like, you wanna make money? And I said, no, I wanna make actual change in the world. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and so, you know, everything is going fine. And at the, inter at the end of the, uh, the interview, she basically says, like, is there anything else you wanna say? And uh, I'm quiet for a moment, and it's kinda of awkward, you know, why would you ask me that? And then God says, um, tell her about the Sabbath. And I said, uh, nope, I'll tell her once I get it. <laughs> I said, uh-uh, you ain't going to get me up in here. No, 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 no. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to this morning? You know how it is. We want to get what we want. Then we start trying to figure out, okay, so how can I fit the Sabbath in there, you know? 
Um, and he was like, tell her about the Sabbath. And I'm like, Lord. So I was faced with a dilemma. Am I going to be honest? Or am I going to compromise in this moment and see if it can work out later? Well, I said, all right. I said, well, there's one other thing. I, I can't work Friday night sundown from uh, Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. So if taking this internship, working on that day is a condition of the internship, unfortunately, I won't be able to take it. And it was quiet. And I'm like, Lord, this ain't right. You know? <laughs> this is just not right. And, uh, and after a moment, she said, uh, don't worry, don't worry. We, we can work around that. Uh, the next week, they ended up offering me the internship. Why do I share this with you? Um, again, when you look at your faith as a disadvantage, you begin to look at who God's called you to be and not really embrace it. Because then we got to say, well, I can't really live out my dreams because of my faith. But when you actually apply your faith to your dream, then you begin to see where God is. See, part of why I believe he was compelling me to tell him, tell him about the Sabbath was he wanted to show me that if this is a door for you, your faith won't keep you out of it. But the key to go through the door is to honor me every step of the way. You have to put me first, and you can't be afraid to represent me and what I have called you to believe. And so getting in the door, my, that was my first, I mean, and getting into Hollywood and getting your foot in the door is one of the hardest things to do. So I think when God was calling me, what he wanted me to know was that we can do this. Don't worry about what people say. Let me guide you. Because people don't understand your story. So how is how somebody who ain't qualified to direct your movie try to tell you what your movie's about? You ain't even read my script. You don't know what the story is. But you're trying to tell me, no, you can't go on this scene. What you talking about? This scene is actually the key to all my life, my blessing. My point is, is that we have to start relying more on God and our own relationship with him so that he can help us navigate the very things he has called us to take on. And so I get the internship interview, and, and uh, I mean, I get the internship, excuse me, and I, I interned there for two years. And it was very interesting that um, while I was there, you know, God would do some peculiar things. Uh, one night uh, as an intern, you know, I was kind of like an assistant, you know, like a third assistant to one of the managers there. His name was uh, Benny Medina. And, uh, you know, he's very, very, very successful, popular, big manager. I mean, he's like one of the most successful managers probably ever in the business. And at the time, he was managing Babyface. And so one night, we, anybody, y'all know Babyface? I'm talking to y'all like y'all know Babyface. And not everybody here know Babyface, okay? Y'all might need that when the sun goes down. Just Google Babyface, all right? You know, you know, Let me feel, you know, every time I close my eyes, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's good music, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so what happened was one night we were preparing uh, the manager to go overseas to meet with um, Babyface and Michael Jackson. And um, I, we were there late, it was probably about midnight. And uh, by the time we got finished getting him ready, and we were getting ready to leave, and God says, pray with him. And I'm like, Lord, are you kidding me? I'm an intern. What are you talking about? You know you know how God tells you to do something. Anybody ever felt God tell you to do something, you know? And you didn't want to do it? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. And so I'm just like, all right, all right. I said, well, um, you know, would you mind if, I, if, we, if we pray before you get on the plane for traveling mercy? And he looked at me, and he's like, Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> so we get in a circle, you know, and we pray. And, um, you know, come to find out a little later that he couldn't remember the last time someone had prayed with him. And there were other times while I was there, he would say, hey, man, you know, can you pray with me? I mean, one time, you know, I went by the studio. Um, he was in the studio with, uh, with Puffy, or P. Diddy, as he's known now. And, um, and I had to drop off a package to him. And before I left, he said, hey, man, can you, can you pray with me? And there we are in the studio praying. You know, and so we are the light. Can't hide the light under a bushel. A light can only shine in darkness. So we're called to take our light to those who need it. Amen? Amen. And so there I am. I, get, I have the internship. Um, and then Will starts his own company, uh, production company, my junior year. I go intern for them. 
Um, and then, you know, I ended up getting a job there uh, as an assistant um, at Will's company uh, when I graduated in the year 2000. And an assistant, just so you know, in Hollywood, on the executive side, pretty much everybody starts from the ground up. You know, it's an apprenticeship business, so you start as an assistant. Assistant is like, you know, you answer phones, you, you get coffee, whatever your boss needs you to do. You know, it's like an administrative uh, position, it's like a secretary, so that's what I was doing. You know, I was answering phones, I was scheduling, I was doing all of the administrative work of the office. But when I got the job, um, I was promised that I would get a promotion, you know, in about a year. Because what was happening is that, because I'd been with the company and Will for about four years at that point in time, they knew I was, I, I was doing good work. You know, and so they said, look, we'll make you, you know, an assistant for a year, do that, and then we'll promote you. I was like, great, you know, and I was like, cool, this is excellent, amen? And what was interesting, to backtrack, and I'll come right back to this part of the story, at the age of 15, I gave my first sermon. And we had youth day up at uh, my church in, in Oakland. And um, just because I was the most outspoken one, they were like, okay, you, you're gonna preach for youth day. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean, I don't know how to preach. They said, no, 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 you can, you can do it, you can do it. And so, you know, I got my little sermon together, got my notes, and, and uh, you know, did the best I could. And, you know, people were very supportive, right? But as I started doing that, people started saying, oh, you gotta preach more. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll preach, you know, but I, I, I ain't going into ministry. <laughs> I'm going into the movies, so don't, don't, don't think you're gonna just have me speak all this time and then get, you know, get seduced into ministry. No, I'm not. Uh, uh I am going to make some movies, okay? And, and so once I got to LA, you know, I did not, I didn't want to have anything to do with ministry. Because I didn't see how it fit with what I believed God was calling me to do in movies. Okay. So I take the job as the assistant at Will's company. Uh, this is right when I graduated in the year 2000. And not too long after that, my younger brother David. Uh, who went to Oakwood, he came back to Oakland to do a week revival with some of his uh, ministry buddies. And they were all, you know, about probably at that time, you know, 19 years old. And so they're up on stage, and, you know, leading out and preaching, and I'm in the back because I went up there to help. I'm in the back, and God is saying to me, why aren't you using the gift that I gave you? And I'm like, Lord, but I don't know what to do with it. He's like, that's not your issue. You know I gave it to you. Why are you not using it? So I was like, man, well, I don't know what you want me to do with that. <laughs> and about a month later, my uncle, who was pastor of the church, he said, Devon, can you come up and start preaching once a month? And you know how somebody who you can't really say no to? <laughs> you know, and so I'm like, oh, uh, okay. And so I start going up once a month and preaching. What begins to happen is that as I start embracing my gift, people in Hollywood start finding out about it. So there'll be times, you know, Will comes to the office and says, yo, yo, what's up, Rev, man? I hear you preaching. <laughs> True story. I just saw Will yesterday. He's like, what's up, pastor? And I'm an executive. Y'all missed it. All right. Y'all will get there. Y'all will get there. Um, um, and, and so what happened as I started embracing who God made me to be and stop trying to put a label on it, things start happening. But you know, the enemy is not happy when we really start to become all God calls us to be. Who can testify that the enemy is not happy? All right? So, man, he was so unhappy that he said, okay, I'm gonna put some serious conflict in your storyline. I'll never forget. One morning, I walk into my office. Well, sorry, it wasn't the office, it was a cubicle. It wasn't even a cubicle, it was a desk outside the door, all right? <laughs> I'm really being honest, it ain't like no walls or nothing, you know? And, and uh, um, I had some friends that worked in the film department at Will's Production Company. And one morning, they, I, literally my desk is right here, and my boss's office is like right in front of me, and the door's on the left. And I see them walk across into his office, you know, happy, excited. It's the morning, they're like, hey, you know, boss wants to meet with us, great. And they walk out completely devastated. They got let go. They 
were some things happening in the environment that no one knew about, and they were making some changes, and the entire film department got let go in one moment. Couldn't have planned for it, didn't see it coming, but life happened. And I had so much compassion for what was going on, and I, I, was, I was sad, I said, how could that happen to them? And I, I'll be honest, I couldn't help but think about myself, like, whoa, man, maybe, maybe, I know they're not clearing out the department for me. <laughs> you know, I'm, I mean, I, I think highly of myself, but not that much, right? <laughs> and, and so I began to realize maybe this is not going to happen. And as I would go in the office day by day, the more the reality that the promotion was not going to happen set in. And now what was happening is I was viewing my entire future <laughs> through the lens of that one job. Who am I talking to? Yeah. All right. Yeah. That you view your entire future through the lens of that promotion. Mm -hmm. See, while I was going to USC, I never went home to the Bay Area for a summer because I stayed in LA and worked. But I didn't want anything to keep me from making it in, in Hollywood. So there were some summers I couldn't even make enough money working one job. I'd work three jobs. Mm -hmm. I'd do whatever it took to pursue this dream. And so I'm, I've made all the right moves. There were times I wouldn't go hang out with friends because I was you know, at my internship. There were a lot of sacrifices I made along the way. And here I am, and the thing that was promised me, which I viewed as the key to my entire future, and the validation of my purpose was being withheld. And I did not know how to reconcile it. So instead of operating in faith, I got depressed. I got angry. I got frustrated. I said, God, how could you do this? You know, here I am, I'm in the workplace. I'm being a good example. I'm still going to church. I'm still honoring the Sabbath. I'm returning an honest tithe. I'm doing all of the things that you said I should do. Why would you take this from me? I don't understand where you are in this. So for months, not weeks, months, I would go into the office depressed angry, frustrated, not sure what to do with myself or my life. You know, and I put on the happy face, the happy Sabbath face. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> happy Sabbath! <laughs> you know, man, people don't even know. You messed up inside. You about to break down crying if somebody sit with you long enough, you know? Boy, we put on that happy Sabbath. Yes. That's how we go in the office, right? Because I didn't want anybody to know that I was really tore up inside really messed up. And so one day, you know, I went to my cubicle. I did upgrade to a cubicle by that time. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just said, I'm done with this. I said, I can't, I, I said, I can't do this anymore. And at the time, I mean, I said, you know, I, I, only thing I can do is, is operate in what I have been taught to do, which is faith and prayer. So I go in the bathroom, I shut the door, and I just have it out with God. I said, listen, uh, Lord, in your word, you say anything I ask for in the name of Jesus, you would do it. So I can't come in here like this any longer. So if your word is true in the name of Jesus, I need you to move on this job today. You got to do something, Lord. You have to do something. I'm standing on your promises right now, and I'm asking you to show me that your promises are real. I get up, leave the bathroom, go back to my cubicle. Later on that day, my boss, this never happened before. He and I were the only two people left in the office, and he calls me in, he says, hey, Devon, you have a minute. You know, I'm thinking, look, I work for you. So, I mean, I, how many minutes do I have? You tell me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I end up, you know, I say, yeah, I got, yeah, yeah, I got a minute. So I go into his office and uh, sit down. And uh, he says, uh, Will and I, we love you. But we know that you've hit a wall here. We wish we could promote you, but we can't. So we want to help you find a new job. Wow. I said, okay. Do we have a timeline? He said, no timeline, you know. Make a list of everybody you know, and we'll make some calls for you, and it'll be cool. So I walk out of the office, and part of me is doing a holy dance, you know. Um, yeah, David danced before God, y'all. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so I, I was like, part of me wanted to do a holy dance. I said, wait a minute, God heard me. I prayed, and he heard me. 
then I said, okay, wait, they want to help me find a new job, okay. <laughs> Whoa, okay. All right, let me translate for my young professionals in the house. If your boss says they want to help you find a new job, <laughs> that means your job ain't yours much longer, all right? <laughs> so you need to start looking quickly, okay. And, and so I was like, wow, I got to put some works behind my faith, right? So I, I made a list of everybody that I, I, I knew and, and sent out my resume and went out on as many interviews as I could get. Uh, no job came. I went to Will and said, Will, um, I need you to give me a meeting with your agents who are the most powerful in the business. And Will said, sure, no problem. He set up the meeting. Now it's funny, I, I tell this part of my story and I like to highlight this, especially for uh, you know, us as young professionals, which is, you know, me, I'm an, I, at that time I'm an assistant, okay? Will Smith, biggest movie star in the world. I go over to his office and ask to see him. He wasn't in at the time. I left a message, his assistant passed the message along, and when he got in, he came over to the cubicle where I was. Now, why would he do this? It's not that, he, Will's a really nice guy, right? But why would he respond when the assistant said, hey, I need you? Because for five years, I was showing up on time. I was doing the filing. I was getting the coffee. I was operating in integrity, I was staying late making deposits, deposits, deposits in the bank. So when it was time to make a withdrawal, my account was good. Amen. Come on, somebody. See, a lot of times we get frustrated because we think the person that's supposed to bless us and who God's supposed to work through ain't doing what they're supposed to do, so we get mad. Well, why isn't this person doing this? And I, I'm supposed, no, 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 you just keep showing up. You keep being excellent. You keep doing great things with the work God has put in front of you. He said, because you were faithful over a few, I'll make you rule over many. He said, what's done in private, I'll reward openly. This is the God we serve. But sometimes when you commit to success, it takes time. And you can't let your frustration be evident in your work. No excuse for less than excellent work. If you can't do excellent work, quit. It's not worth the damage to your, your reputation. Because somebody somewhere is gonna call back to that one job you thought don't nobody know. And say, well, how were they then? And you always want the report to be good. So I had enough equity in my account with Will that when it was time to make a withdrawal, it was already covered. So he set up the meeting uh, with uh, his agents. I go in, I meet with them. They send me out on interview after interview. I get no job. And time seems to be running out. So I said, I don't, I don't know what else to do. Anybody ever been there before? He's like, I, I, man, you got me on this one, Lord. I don't know what to do. So I ended up going to church. And just so happened, um, this particular service uh, was an Easter service. And it, Easter fell at the end of March on this particular year. And uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes was in town. And I went to hear him preach. I've always liked his sermon. And so I went to hear him in L.A. at the Forum. And um, I got there really late, and so I was like a dot. I mean, he looked like a dot on the stage. I was in the rafters, you know? <laughs> and um, he preached a sermon called Turn the Page. At the end of Deuteronomy, Moses has died, and the Israelites are mourning his death. Um, and when you turn the page to the beginning of Joshua, the very next chapter, uh, God says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Um, but it's time for you all to get up and go into the land that I promised you. And he spoke to me because... At the end of Deuteronomy, they're crying over a situation that ain't gonna change. The chapter is over, Moses is dead. You have to have the faith to turn the page to the next chapter in your life, knowing that God's promises are still good. And so I said, okay, Lord, you must be speaking to me. So on Monday, I go in and I, I quit. I put in my two week notice. And they said, wait, Devon, well, do you have a job? What are you doing? <sighs> you know, you, well, what's going on? I said, I can't tell you faith works if I'm afraid to try. Man, you know how to be real spiritual with somebody. they like, hey, put up the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y'all know how it is. You know? So, so it's interesting that, that during this period of time, y'all got to stay with me. Okay? If 
During this period of time, I, my prayer was, okay, Lord, I want you to give me a job during this, this two weeks so I can run up and down the halls and show everybody how good you are. You know how we put in our, our, our praise request. Lord, I will praise you if. I'll really give you the glory if. And so that first week, you know, my prayer was, Lord, where's the job? Where's the job? Where's the job? And uh, at the end of the first week, I got no call about a job. And uh, that weekend, he brought me to my knee. And he said, do you think that I sent you through this for a job? No matter how great the job, it's always temporary. I got jobs, I got houses, I got land, I got money, I got positions. Those are all material things, sure, can do that in a moment. But do you think I'm sending you through this for something material and temporary? No, I'm sending you through this because I want a closer walk with you. And I had to get your attention so that you would know that everything that you dream about and all the visions I put in you are tied up in a relationship with me. But you've been putting me on other people that are not your God and they are not the source of your resource. So I needed to get your attention so you would know that I love you and I need to walk with you if we're gonna walk this thing out together. And when I got that revelation, I apologized, Lord, I repented. I said, I'm sorry. Here I am praying for a job, a thing. I wouldn't even pray for you. So I changed my prayer. I said, Lord, give me you. And I said, as a matter of fact, Lord, here, I'm going to take my desire for this business and put it on the altar. Take it. Because I don't want this business more than I want your will. Give me your will. Because I know if you give me your will, I will be fulfilled because that's what I was created to do. And I don't want to be pursuing something because I think it's what I should pursue. I only want to pursue what you know is already in my heart to do, and you've already given me the skill to do it. So take the business, Lord, but give me your will. And then I said, you know what? I, I want you to know I'm serious, so I started fasting. The second week of the two-week notice, I fasted all week, pretty much. The last day, working in Will's company. Now, mind you, people thought I was committing career suicide. You don't leave voluntarily working for the biggest movie star in the world. Do you get that? That is just like, that's just, don't even make sense, okay? People thought I was crazy. I walk in that last day and uh, I feel so weak I have to eat. And I eat and I say, okay, Lord, I hope my sacrifice is acceptable to you. I end up taking my boxes that day, leaving unemployed. How's that for faith? Isn't it interesting? Faith is not easy. I'll turn your name and say, it is not easy. It is not easy. Anybody that gets up and try to tell you that walking in faith is easy, I don't know. Y'all might just want to, you know, you know, say, hold up. What, what was your faith experience? Mine ain't been easy. It's been good, but not easy. Amen? Amen? And so I left unemployed. And on Sunday morning, a buddy of mine called me and said, hey, how's it going to feel to wake up tomorrow? He was saying, how's it going to feel to wake up unemployed? You know, you stepped out on faith, and what do you really have to show for it? And I said, listen, man, I'm fragile enough as it is. I don't need this. I don't need this foolishness. I said, I'm getting off the phone. You ain't got to entertain all that craziness, you know? I mean, when you try to do what God calls you to do, you need to keep a clear mind and stay focused on the goal. Because sometimes people plant seeds of, of, of distraction, and they're the closest ones to you, you know? And then you start listening and have them in your head instead of having God in your head, all right? Sometimes you just need to shut people down. Say, all right, I'll get back to you when I'm ready. You ain't got to return every text just because it comes in. Come on, somebody. Get control of your life, all right? Come on now. So I got off the phone with them. Monday rolls around, uh, and it's my, uh, you know, first day of unemployment. I turn on the TV. I have no idea what to do with myself. And... Uh, you know, start watching some judge shows and <laughs> some soap operas, man. These people don't ever age, you know? <laughs> Same storylines, all my children, all of that, right? And, um, you know, mom calls. I didn't tell anybody what was going on. She called the office looking for me. They say, I don't work there no more. She calls me frantic. She's like, are you crazy? What's going on? I said, mom, don't worry, me and God got this. She said, yeah, uh-huh. She said, do this to me again. <laughs> 
And, uh, you know, I get off with mom, and, you know, I'm just, I don't, you know, I'm like, all right, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I, I'm just believing on you. Around 5 o'clock that night, uh, I had interviewed over at a production company um, that Babyface's wife ran called, uh, her name was Tracy Evans. Anybody ever heard of Tracy Evans? Um, she's a big producer. And um, I had interviewed there, you know, a while back. And uh, the president of her company calls me and says, hey, Devon, how you doing? And I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> He's like, look, he said, um, you know, I'm sorry to get back to you so late, but, uh, you know, Tracy and I have finally made a decision. We want to offer you an executive position in the film department. Do you still want it? I said, hold on. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, I'll take the job. Yes. <laughs> you know, we, we, we negotiated, you know, a salary, uh, which wasn't much. Amen. Um, and uh, and I, he was like, yeah, well, you know, we can, you can come in next week. I said, no, I can come in tomorrow. You know, uh, the paperwork, you know. And uh, immediately after getting off the, that phone, I, I fell to my knees. Amen. And I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, because he wanted me to know, you know, that it wouldn't be about having a relationship with the biggest movie star in the world or the biggest agents in the world, or the biggest producers. But real success would be because I had a relationship with the God of God, Amen. the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. And that would be the secret to my success and your success. Every single thing, and I wish I had time to tell you more about my testimony, but I want to take questions as well. Um, but every single thing that has happened in my career, I can track right back to a step of faith. It, 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 my faith walk in the industry is to such a degree where this summer they said, okay, we're, we're going to give you a promotion. And part of your job description is we, you're gonna, we want you to make more inspirational faith-based movies that can go mainstream. That now is part of your job description. The position never existed before in the history of the company, and Columbia Pictures is like 100 years old. Do you understand the power of your God? God is not subject to the regulations of your industry. He's just waiting for you to step into his power so he can show you and them who he really is. Why are you stepping back today when you should be stepping forward? If you get nothing else from our time today, I hope you get that faith works and you have to start putting your faith in action. Come on now. It, it, it blows my mind the amount of truth that we have and the amount of knowledge. But knowledge is nothing if it's not applied. It's not good just to know the word if you ain't living the word. Amen. Peter walked on water. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he continued to do the impossible. We have to start operating in more faith and stop worrying about what people think because people are going to try because they disappointed about their life they're going to try to keep you back from what God is doing in yours uh uh no 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 you get your own life together you get your own movie together you know what I mean I'm not going uh uh no, just because you're not happy in your story don't come and try and bring that unhappiness in me no I want to uh uh I got a happy ending to my story amen, amen. I'm going to end up in the kingdom amen amen, amen. amen. Um, I want to take. I want to read one verse that God put on my heart to share with you. Then I'll let me take some questions before time is up. Daniel three sixteen to eighteen, um, and it says uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, "O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the burning furnace, the God we serve." is able to save us from it. And he will. Turn to your neighbor and say, he will. Rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he doesn't, if he makes the choice not to, that will not, that will not change our response, O king, because we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. 
This is what I live by. We know God is all powerful. And I have the faith that he's going to do it. But even if he doesn't do it, it doesn't change his faithfulness. He might not do it for a reason. But regardless to what he may choose to do, it will not change my position to be faithful under the most extreme circumstances. I will not compromise and bow down and serve your God. As a matter of fact, I will stand in faith and let's see what God does. I challenge you this morning. To not look at this as, oh, we had fun this weekend. Oh, that was a cool retreat. You can go on a retreat. You, you've been on a million of them. No, I challenge you this weekend to really say, God, what are you calling me to do? Where am I most afraid? And help me with your power face my fears so that the power of faith can be unleashed in my life. Some questions? Questions, thoughts? Don't be scared. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure that in your industry there are many uh, temptations. Like, how, how do you handle it? Like, you know, when they ask you to do something that you know that is something that you shouldn't do before the Lord. Yeah, that's a good question. I get this question a lot. You know, how do you handle temptations? Uh, you know, there's a lot of temptations. You know, around every door. Um, part of it, you know, in a, in a macro sense, is keeping your eye on why you're there, on the big picture, right? So it's like, I believe and I know that I'm in Hollywood because that's where God has placed me. So I look at it as being a servant. You know, I'm there to serve and that's where he's called me. So when I put that idea of service on everything I do, achieving his will is my most important desire, right? So you can't be tempted by something you don't already want to do. Mm, did you get that? <laughs> Temptation is only relative to what you already want to do. Yeah. Right? So a lot of things, God has just changed my appetite. So those things I don't want to do. So things that might be temptations, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever. I don't have the desire. So those aren't temptations, you know. One of my greatest temptations is ambition. Because I want to be successful even more. I have dreams. I have desire. You know, so there's sometimes I get in the office and, and I'm letting my ambition drive me. And then when I get in ambition and, I, and I'm not really in his will or I'm not really seeking him, then I start to service myself because, oh, well, this is going to get me this position. This is going to make me look good for my bosses. This is going to let people in the industry know who I am, right? I start feeding the ego, right? And the ambition feeds the ego. So one thing that I just continuously pray on is, God, I know you made me ambitious, but please help me stay focused on what you're calling me to do. Let me see you and all the projects that I'm trying to get done and the things that maybe you don't want to get done. Let me have a piece about that, you know? But so much of it is really keeping my eye on why I'm there. You know, when you think of a, a soldier, okay, they get deployed in Afghanistan, their mission, they have a mission. Here is the mission, right? We're there to defeat the enemy and rescue as many as we can. Now, if you're there and you start, you know, forgetting why you're there and you're hanging with other people and all this stuff, it's like, no, no, you're here to save people, then you're going home. So I try to keep focused on why he has me there. And the times when I miss it, I pray for grace, pray for forgiveness, I repent, and I get back and keep going forward. Yes, sir. Ah, man, I love that. Uh, the question is, though, um, sometimes when you, uh, when dealing with conflict, where, you know, you, you got to get up on Sabbath and, and, and preach about, you know, don't commit adultery, and then now uh, you go in the office Monday morning and, and a movie's being put out that may, in the eyes of some, promote it. Yes. How do you deal with those types of conflicts, uh, both the preach of the word as well as uh, yes. the person trying to serve? That's good. Um, in, in, in a number of ways. You know, part of what God has called me to do is, one, the movies that I make. You know, God has, one, raised me up in such a way where I'm able to pretty much work on the films that I, I want to work on, you know, to a degree. So when you look at the films that I do, I, I try to do films that, you know, are inspirational, are positive. But the one thing that I, I put out there is, and this is a little controversial, right? If you were to put a rating on your life, right, because of the things that you have faced and that I have faced, how many would say, oh, I got a PG-rated life? 
No, we, we have faced death. We have come through acts of violence. We have come through hell, right? So if you go to a movie and it doesn't represent life, you say that's whack. I don't care how spiritual you are. You can go see a movie and say, that, no, that, that's not real. So what I'm called to do is to make films that represent life, but point people higher. I don't want to make movies that just pander and, 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 and try to sanitize the reality of life because that's not going to help nobody. You know, I want people to be able to see, man, I went through that. My mother went through that. You know, in Jumping the Broom, one of the storylines is that the bride discovers that her parents aren't her parents. That was real. That's real. That happened. So I, I like to mirror real life in film, but then aspire to and show people, okay, here's how you can deal with it and come through it. Right. Um, the other part of it is by being in the rooms. There's there's a lot of movies that get made that I don't have anything to do with. Right. By being in the room and giving notes on scripts, I can at least articulate. Well, wait a minute. You know, are you sure about this or why about that? And you have this. You know, the black character so acting so crazy in this. Why? You know, so being in the room can help make it less than what it would have been on things that aren't in my, you know, in my responsibility. You know what I mean? Um, and here's the thing, I don't feel, I mean, look at Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in Babylon, right? God put them in Babylon, right? They were responsible for lifting him up and being the stewards over what he called them to lead over, right? But the, the blood of Babylon wasn't on their hands. They were there to be light and help as many as they could. So I feel the same way, which is like, I, I'm not going to try and take responsibility for every movie that gets made in Hollywood. That's just not what I'm called to do, right? You know, just like if you're in, in music, you can't take responsibility for every song that gets made, right? But I do my best on every film that I do to really pray about it. And there have been times, you know, things just don't feel right. I, I just don't do it. I just say, no, no, that ain't me. You know, there's a movie out right now, I'm not gonna say. Yeah, I'm just like, no, that ain't me. That ain't me. And uh, it, it's made a lot of money, too. But, uh, you know, money ain't everything. Yes, my brother. Um, I think I, I mean, the, the gist of the question was, you know, it's one thing when you don't have the full knowledge of Hollywood, right? But when you have the full knowledge of Hollywood, is my participation in the business tempting God? Okay. Um, good question. I don't believe so. You know, again, Hollywood, music industry, television industry, this, these, by this, these three industries influence so much for the world. And I think for me, you know, even when you look at the word, I mean, you know, look at David, look at Joseph, okay? These are all biblical examples of, of mighty men of God that God used in industry to bring change. Mm -hmm. And so my point of view is to be in it is an opportunity to affect culture for the positive. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at a movie like Jumping the Broom, when was the last time you've seen a mainstream movie where the, the bride and the groom said, we're going to wait until marriage? It never happened, never. But the whole point was we need to put the virtue in it so that other young kids that see this can say, hey, you can live virtuous and be blessed. So my point is, is I don't believe it's tempting God at all, not even a little bit, because I believe God has placed me there uh, and is using me to contribute in a positive way to all of the negative pollution uh, of culture that sometimes comes through Hollywood. And the one thing I just I want to say is that you know, the media loves to portray and paint, you know, the industry with this broad brush, you know, sometimes. And so I challenge you, you know, as, as Christians, um, behind that broad brush are real people. And I can tell you that the people I work with, they don't go into work saying, 
who can I, you know, offend today? You know, how much violence can I put in this movie today? 